Street photography. Probably the most misunderstood genre in the world of photography. Not just to the everyday person, but to the photographers that shoot it as well. No matter the controversy around it, many others and myself find ourselves out on the streets searching and awaiting for that decisive moment to find its way into our view. It can be a little intimidating when first starting out, so I thought I'd make a video about what I would have found helpful when I first started. The first tip is to use aperture priority mode. Being able to use manual mode is important, and it's an important skill to have as a photographer, but the thing that's more important than that is actually getting the shot. When I first started shooting street photography, I only used manual mode and I missed plenty of shots because of it. Aperture Priority allows you to free up a lot of headspace and in turn gives you the ability to focus on your surroundings more. The less you're fiddling with your camera, the better. The next tip, and the only other one related to gear, is focal length. Ideally, you have a prime lens, you pick a focal length, and you stick to that focal length. If all you have are zoom lenses, pick one that has the focal length that you think you want to use, set it to that, and leave it at that. Just make it a rule not to change that focal length while you're out shooting, because the focal length you choose will impact your style. And the more that you switch between different focal lengths, the less consistent your style will look throughout your portfolio. I tend to be more interested in shooting photos of people, so I usually stick with a 35 millimeter focal length. It allows me to get closer to my subject, also allows me to take wider shots from further away if I wanna incorporate more of a scene. Whereas I think longer focal lengths are great, maybe if you're still not comfortable shooting that close up, or if you want to incorporate more layers into your image and do a little more abstract work. But you're just going to have to pick one, get used to it, and figure out what works for you and what is in line, what works best with what is in line with what it is you want to shoot. If you aren't already the type of person that people watches, I would suggest actually going out and trying to do it. Even just in your everyday life, at work, when you're out with friends, out to dinner, just practice, practice the art of noticing. One of the biggest skills in street photography is just the skill of observing your surroundings and being able to react in a timely enough manner to capture the shot. I'd even suggest taking a notepad and just jotting down the things that you notice or the things that capture your attention the most. There's a lot of observing the world around you that's important, but it's also just as important to understand and be aware of what captures your attention, what intrigues you, what sticks out to you in the world. And I think that helps translate to when you actually do go out with a camera, how much more prepared you'll be for those small moments that you do witness. I would say one of the more difficult parts of street photography is not disturbing a scene. So I think it's important to try and match the energy of the space you're in and the people you will inevitably interact with when out on the street. Doing so, I think, lessens the amount of negative interactions you'll have while out shooting. And, you know, you're not, you're not out here trying to start anything or hurt anybody's feelings or make them feel uncomfortable. So just do your best to 
match the energy around you. When you do interact with somebody or somebody asks you a question, just tell them what you're doing. Show, show them some of your work. If you have any of your work on like Instagram or anything, most of the time people are really understanding. And as long as you're decent and respectful, nothing, nothing bad is really going to happen. On top of that, you're trying to also capture these moments without like too much influence on your part. However, you will occasionally disturb a scene and sometimes it can be a good or a bad thing. This photo, for instance, would have just been a woman talking on the phone, but she was definitely ready for me. She threw her jacket up in front of her face as I went to go take the photo and she ended up getting what she wanted, which was to not be noticed and captured in a, in a photo. And I walked away with a much more interesting photo than it would have been. So as with anything, there's like exceptions to the rules. And sometimes, you know, people will notice you. They'll look directly at the camera. And there are instances where that actually adds to the image. But again, for the most part, you want to try to be a fly on the wall. This last tip is one that I still struggle with, and that is to lower your expectations. Street photography is a game of skill and circumstance. Much like everyday life, you're in control of your actions and your reactions to the things around you, but you have practically no control over the things outside of you. There are days that you might go out and shoot for an hour and walk, walk away with a couple of images. There's days you might go shoot for five hours and come, come back with absolutely nothing. So when you go out shooting, have little expectations that you're gonna walk away with something amazing. Just go on a walk, enjoy the practice and the art of taking photos. And if you do come away with something awesome, if you don't, it's always another day. Although the days that you do walk away with something are so much better. That's all I really have for this one though. I hope you got something out of this video. If you liked it, maybe I'll see you in the next one.